there's no difference between the two. So if you're having trouble in the beginning, it's okay. Why was it so hard? Because it was eight different ecosystems, seven blockchains, all different cryptography, all different structures, all different wallet structures, many permutations of those structures, the hardware wallet components of those structures. And then the other side of it that made it really difficult was um, that it's a fragmented ecosystem. So what about the custodians? What about the exchanges? And so a lot of people came and said, well, I had my money on Coinbase. You know, how do I redeem? We're like, well, you don't have your keys. You don't have custody of that. You have given it to them. So they got to redeem on your behalf. So go talk to Coinbase. And we actually did offer to a lot of exchanges the opportunity to redeem on behalf of their customers. Some uh, considered it and some just went silent on it. They said, oh, it's not a thing. But that's your risk you take if you turn yeah. over custody of your asset to you know another party. And that's why we also had the proof of work component of it. Because if you missed the first opportunity, the glacier drop, at least you could mine. And so you can get something to participate in them. So even if you had your asset, your Cardano on an exchange that decided not to participate, you can still get what you're what you what you're merited having by through the mining. Well, you got to mine and you'll get what you what you earn through the mining process. Okay. So 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 you, you have to you have to do that. Um, if you've uh, already but, claimed, can you still then mine in addition yeah. to it? Oh, really? Because yeah. that's oh, an so open that. Yeah, it's open. So anybody can mine. And so that's the cool part. It's like, so you get a, like a proof of work style distribution and you kind of get a, like a, like an airdrop style distribution. So you get a little bit of everything, you know? Uh, and is it fair? Well, I mean, it, it, there, no pre-mine, right? A first refusal for everybody. Everybody got a shot at it. They all got a shot at the same time. Uh, and, you know, you work with what you got. And what this has shown is how centralized some of the holdings are inside uh, many ecosystems. And what's really cool is now that the exchanges for the most part, didn't participate. It means that not only we gain a lot of users, they're all retail users. Okay, so they're not like these giant fucking not be dumping whales, everything. Yeah. you know, that are that are that they just fuck your token the minute that it goes up ten percent. You know, they're 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 a little different. Cardano was established with nine thousand nine hundred and I think fourteen buyers, and Midnight will have probably somewhere in the order of magnitude of twenty five to fifty times more in the beginning. So. That's a really, really good thing for a Cardano native asset. And the fact that Brave supports it, blockchain.com supports it, Bitcoin supports it. There's wallets with reach of over 100 million people that at launch will uh, will support uh, CNAs. Uh, so that's good stuff. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's a huge step forward uh, for, for all of us. And, and I stand there's a problem, but I'm so tired of the toxicity. It's like, dude, it didn't work out. Okay. It's net net good for the ecosystem as a whole. We did our best to try to tell everybody what was going to happen. We did our best to deliver as much as we could. Uh, and you didn't pay for it. Okay. I'm so sorry. Your free money didn't work out for you. You know, it's like, it's like, it's not like we have a commercial relationship. It was given away for free to everybody. It's the anti VC chain. And right. paradoxically it actually might outprice all the VC chains. Yeah. I, you know, the toxicity has obviously been a real issue. I've been caught up in it. I mean, I, you know, I've been yelling about Solana and the people promoting it forever. And I've just tried to taper that down myself. I've been, I, you know, I even saw that you and Rand Nooner shook hands and hugged it out and had a, had a nice, you know, visit. And, uh, I, I I'm, I'm so, I would love to just see a place where we can all just start really focusing on bringing things together. I mean, for the benefit of everyone, instead of constantly throwing shit at each other, um hopefully we get there i mean yeah. it would be, it'd be nice if, if midnight is able to play a big role in that you know continuously as we continue to move forward um but it's it's been a real problem yeah well but you know we're making announcements we're getting things done and uh i love our technology laos is the best way to scale there's a beautiful agenda there every year you know we can add to it and uh, it gets faster better cheaper Hydra is really coming into its own. There's an ecosystem forming around it and said that's the dap by dap scaling view. So you have a global scale view, you have a dap by dap scaling view where the dev models really come into its own. And there's a lot of great community projects that are massively improving the dev model. Like Starstream is a great example. I was that. just about to bring that up. That was my yeah. next question. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's talk about that. So, so yeah. Starstream, what's really cool about Starstream is that Cardano contracts are a little harder to compose. So when you have like A and B together, it's hard sometimes to get A and B to be aware of each other. And you have to do a lot of weird stuff to do that. That's that's one of the downsides of the UTXO model. There's a ton of upsides like local determinism and much easier state channels for layer two shit and all these things. But when you actually talk about running an app, event sourcing and 
composability are two trade-offs. Uh, and data availability is another hard one. So what Starstream is going to do is it adds that composition in, and eventually I think there's a path to add in data availability in the event sourcing. What this means is it bridges the gap for a lot of things that Ethereum does easy. And we keep all the security side of Cardano, we keep all the upsides of Cardano, but we actually get the good DevX. The other thing is that it gives us some infrastructure where we can have a discussion about rollups. And there's already projects like Midgard, for example, that are they're coming that are trying to bring that in, like Scroll brought in for uh, Ethereum. Uh, so it gives us a nice path for all of that stuff. So it's one of those things where it's relatively low risk and it's high return. And it's an example of a completely community oriented project identifying a major problem in Cardano and solving that problem. It's not like Charles Hoskinson woke up and said, oh man, that's a major problem. How do I hire somebody to figure this thing out? This was Sebastian Guleman saying, you know what? I know how to solve this problem. I'm just going to go do it. The community embraced it. They funded it and it'll be in market next year. Um, and, and so, so What's cool about that is if you do that four or five times or four or five independent entities, you start solving all your problems really quickly. And it's truly decentralized from that uh, from that viewpoint. But it's part of that broader, make the DevX easier, make the scalability easier, and then ultimately create a lingua franca for a broader set of concerns.